some conspiracy theories were deliberately created to ease the public into accepting internet censorship. What conspiracy theory do you believe to be true? What evidence led you to this conclusion? Marilyn Monroe was murdered by the US government. She frequently attempted suicide and then called someone via her landline next to her bed to come save her. When she died, no traces of it were found within her stomach and her colon had been extremely cleaned. A theory is that she was murdered via enema poisoning. I haven't brushed up on it or researched in a long time so I am probably remembering facts incorrectly. Search it up on YouTube it's quite interesting. Most of the most successful people in the world score above average on psycho or sociopathy checklists, and are also super sleepers, meaning they have a rare gene that allows them to need a lot less sleep than the rest of us, usually 6 or less hours. It seems to be true of both business and politics, as both Obama and Trump fit the bill. Trump being the more noticeable one of course, due to being a cartoonishly evil billionaire, and tweeting at all hours. While that often leads to people with at least somewhat dubious morals gaining more power, it can also be a good thing, at least in politics, due to leaders needing to be able to make difficult decisions without their emotions clouding their minds. For example, Winston Churchill scores pretty highly on the sociopathy checklist as well. Some televangelists may not be entirely sincere in their beliefs. I used to work as a ranch hand in Texas, on a huge ranch owned by a televangelist. He was a very cold, disassociated old man. The only thing he cared for were his trophy kills, which were mounted throughout the estate. I hated it when he came by to visit. Which was not even very often. A lot of the low rent tent revivalists use techniques from stage magicians and con artists. But even the big TV evangelists have spies in the audience and lobby with concealed radio headsets. They talk to people, find out why they're there, and suddenly the prophet knows all this personal information about them, straight from God. 60 Minutes did an expose decades ago, I remember Peter Popoff was one of the charlatans that got exposed. He retired to a life of quiet contemplation until another generation of victims came of age, and resumed his con game. There was a husband and wife team of evangelists who lost everything in their modest home following a very suspicious fire, the couple begged their church for donations to buy clothes and toiletries. 60 Minutes then showed an aerial view of a monstrous mansion in a Dallas suburb the couple secretly owned through a shell company. I love watching these a-holes burn. iHeartRadio coordinates commercials breaks to all take place simultaneously so you're forced to listen to ads even if you change the station. They're practically a monopoly in my area and I notice it happens to me all the time. Someone replied, radio stations, even competitors, do this on purpose. No hidden conspiracy needed. If your main competitor airs spots, commercials, at, 15, 30, and, 45, it's in your interest to do the same. That way your listeners can switch to music on another station during your spot break and potentially stay there. It's not like radio is secret. You can and should monitor competition and plan accordingly. To your original point, iHeart is just a clear channel, and they tend to have a general template that all their stations follow. So one station will have its breaks at or around the same time as another. This is all based on a lot of market research and has generally been tested and refined over time to the point of ensuring rating success. Other stations follow suit. The negative side effect is the homogenization of radio. They all sound alike because it works, but it only works in a everything is mediocre kind of way. If someone does break from the pack and create a successful innovation, other stations follow and the homogenization continues. For a further example, notice that local TV news shows tend to cover weather, sports, local news, etc. All at or around the same basic time. Source, I programmed radio stations for years. Worked for Clear Channel. Played the same classic rock songs in a different order day after day, week after week. I've been working as an American healthcare consultant for two years now, and I genuinely think that insurance companies are purposely denying claims so that they can leverage dollar for their beneficiaries' medical records. For example, one of my clients, a huge and important hospital system, had to deal with hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical claim denials because Humana suddenly decided it didn't believe any of those hospital stays were legitimate. They basically told my client to either fax hundreds of medical records or accept the zero pays. It's really suspicious and unfortunate. But when they have the money, what can you do? That Apple started the AirPods meme, and right before Christmas they would give out $150 gift cards. I fully believe companies are using memes as a marketing technique. All it needs is one big post on a couple subs here and it's all over the internet hitting their target audience in hours days. 
Disney made Zootopia partly to replace the Song of the South characters from Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain is really the only thing that still exists in the public eye from Song of the South, along with the song Zippity Doo since Disney wants to pretend that movie doesn't exist. So they created a movie featuring Fox and Rabbit characters that could replace Bear Fox and Bear Rabbit, and re-theme the entire ride to be Zootopia themed, while leaving some things, like the name, and the songs featured in the ride, from Song in the South. There's also the Disney loves re-theming things to their IP now, getting rid of Maelstrom and bringing in a Frozen themed ride, so it would make sense for them to re-theme a ride to a successful recent movie then keep a ride based off an old, mildly racist movie they're trying to forget. The really stupid conspiracy theories, vaccines causing autism, flat earth, lizard people, etc., are intentionally spread by propaganda groups and troll farms. They don't care what stupid stuff you believe, but they are very interested to know that you're a gullible mark who will believe anything with no evidence, and won't do research with authorities on the matter to find the truth. If you want to spread misinformation, look for the people who do it as a hobby. It could also be divide and conquer. They're doing a good job of dividing us so far. While we're busy bickering and being isolationists, China and Russia are consolidating their power around the world. The 10-year challenge all over social media is actually a way to record and gather more facial recognition data. The ice bucket challenge was definitely something similar. Pour water over my head so the cameras will recognize me in the rainstorm. You know, to spread awareness. Also, some of the fill in the blank with personal information Facebook memes look pretty suspect to me as well. They don't necessarily have to have Facebook or the government behind them, but I do wonder about anything that is you posting your pirate nickname that is based off of the last four digits of your social security number, your mother's maiden name, or your eye color. Why more people aren't skeptical about posting answers to common security questions in a public format is beyond me. The lines on the detergent caps are higher than they should be, so you use more detergent for each load of laundry. It's so easy for them to get away with it. Toothpaste is the same. It is definitely advertised with great big globs of toothpaste on the brush, far more than is needed or recommended. Also hand and dish soap being dispensed is generally at a greater amount than needed to leather. I have a theory that Tinder gives fake, you got a new match notifications, so people get excited and open Tinder, which leads them to swipe more. This is absolutely the case with Plenty of Fish. UK dating app, not sure if it's worldwide like Tinder, quite easy to see the patterns etc and the repeated timings are almost down to within the minute. Also does get loads of matches within the first few days of starting an account, and then again after a few weeks to try and get you interested again. Not a conspiracy theory, but I have my moments of Truman Show delusions. I think this has become a wide enough phenomenon that psychologists have even coined a term for it. I've had stuff happen to myself before that made me really question if my life was a scripted show or a virtual reality experience. I consider myself pretty observant, and this one particular time it was as though all the extras were shocked that I was at a specific place. It is very hard to explain but it was like stranger after stranger had looks on their faces when they made eye contact with me like, oh no, what is he doing here? As though they were bad actors incapable of hiding their surprise. It really freaked me out and I'm not prone to episodes of paranoia or delusions of grandeur, and I don't experiment with drugs. I'm just a regular Joe type guy who sometimes notices something is wrong or different with a given situation. I remember even checking myself in the mirror afterwards to make sure I didn't have something weird on my face, there was nothing, no explanation for what I experienced. The news report about beards containing more bacteria than a dog that just licked his own a-hole. Beards are messing with facial recognition software. The man wants beards to not be trendy anymore. If we started wearing zebra makeup to mess with facial recognition software there would be a campaign to dehumanize people wearing zebra makeup. Some celebrities fake their deaths to retire from public eyes. Jim Morrison for example. He was burned out with his career with The Doors, starting to reinvent himself as Mr. Mojo Ryzen. His actual death could be seen as slightly shady, he was a drinker and whilst was known to dabble with hallucinogenics, he was never a taker of heroin and looked down on his peers and lovers for taking it. Pamela also died pretty quickly after he allegedly passed. That the dust the Kleenex tissues have, makes you sneeze more, therefore using more tissues. This is well known for nasal decongestants like Benzedrex. I think it's the same for chapsticks too. They causes lips to become more dry a couple hours after usage. 
I base this on the fact that my lips are more dry 5 hours after using chapstick than 2 days after using it. I've always speculated that a lot of priceless artwork and historical documents are actually replicas or copies. Obviously a painting by a world famous artist using a very specific technique would be very hard to fake, and I don't think that every art scholar in the world is paid off in some grand conspiracy. Rather, I just think that either the national treasures never left their vaults or that some national treasures actually were lost to history but they were copied. Banks and landowners conspire to manipulate urban land prices. Turn an area into a ghetto by marking it as a high-risk loan proposition, denying loans in the area. Property values plummet on a downtown area because no one can sell, because no one can get a loan. Once things are down enough, you can buy up prime location land at pennies on the dollar then redevelop it into being worth the real market value of such a central location, plus what you invested in the actual development. Michael Jordan's father was murdered in retribution for Jordan not paying off massive gambling debt. Jordan didn't retire and then come back, he was suspended for gambling. In the mid-90s, Michael Jordan was an industry. The truth about his gambling habits may have cost a lot of people a lot of money, so the cover story was presented. I believe in the mattress store conspiracy, so the conspiracy is that mattress stores are for money laundering. I went onto Google Maps and typed in mattress stores near me. There were four mattress stores in the same shopping center. There was a road that had five mattress stores less than a mile apart. So I definitely believe in it. All my devices listen to me. The other day I was arguing with my dad about some chicken I thought had gone off, it was frozen for about a month so we weren't too sure but my dad was insistent that it was still edible. Dad decided to ask Google, and lo and behold the related searches even from the first letter were, is chicken edible after being frozen for a month and how long can you freeze chicken before it goes off? Also, my mom and I use this tactic where if we need to ring up a company about something and it puts us in a queue, we swear at it. It then puts you on a priority list and you don't have to wait as long. Kinda sketchy on the company's behalf. I believe there is a ridiculous amount of pedophilia among the upper echelons of society. Whether it is uncovered in the Catholic Church, British Parliament, Hollywood, Washington DC, Saudi Arabia, the mainstream media doesn't seem interested in shining a light on the networks and procurers who allow this practice to thrive. Remember when Sasha Baron Cohen inadvertently uncovered an underage service in Las Vegas? Imagine the demand required for this heinous practice to exist. Offered by the concierge no less. PETA was formed by meat companies to make animal rights activists look like idiots. The majority of animal rights activists don't like PETA. PETA wastes a lot of their own time calling out video games and cartoons. They operate shelters that have kill rates over 90%. Many of the animals they kill are perfectly healthy, happy, and adoptable. They also just make people who actually care about animal rights look stupid as hell with their parody games. No real animal welfare advocate thinks like, Pokemon is a problem. The USA will never add colleges to public funding like they did with high schools because then the enlistment rate for the military would plummet. Source, everyone I know who joined the service just to help pay for school. In addition to this the federal government makes a ton of money off of student loans. Source, just took out 70k with 6 plus percent interest rate that will accumulate for a minimum of 4 years before I even start to pay them off. Multiply this by every student that doesn't default on their loans and that is a lot of money. Most anti-smoking slash vaping ads, including those truth ads are funded by tobacco companies, that part isn't conspiracy it's just a fact. Sometime in the 80s the industry was sued and part of the settlement included them funding anti-smoking ads. It may technically be opinion, but I don't think many are gonna disagree that most of those ads are also just plain annoying as hell. I think that's on purpose, so you'll ignore them, hell I personally have almost wanted to smoke just to spite the ads. I honestly think a lot of people from the 1% richest people in the world hold the human sex trafficking industry. The reason I think this is because no country is showing awareness to this issue like it should be. I think they hold so many positions of power and media outlets with the checkbook that they can get away with it without people putting up too much of a fuss. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight. But thanks to human or mechanical errors there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. 
Also the reason why we don't see as many examples of UFOs now, even through pretty much everyone has a camera, is because people are not that interested in this time period, since we already document aspects of human life all the time. All this complaining about millennials being lazy and entitled is designed to push more young people to prove they aren't, by adopting unhealthy work habits, such as working overtime without complaint, not taking vacation time, etc. I think this became especially necessary after millennials got more burned out and resentful as unpaid internships became a huge thing. It seems like that helped more people see the light on being exploited and manipulated by workplaces. More and more people are being screwed over by their employers while being told that they should basically be grateful that people are willing to pay them. Employers aren't cutting you a paycheck because they care about you. You fulfill their needs. They aren't your family, and if it's a 40-hour work week, you don't owe them a minute more than 40 hours, and that's not laziness, that's refusing to be taken advantage of. Avril Lavigne being dead and substituted by her doppelganger Melissa Vandela. This meme isn't dead yet. It makes sense considering Melissa was allegedly hired as Avril's publicity double. The conspiracy focuses on whether Melissa assumed Avril's identity or not, and if Avril committed suicide. I think a reason we haven't been visited by extraterrestrials is because they don't possess the same motivations as us. We as humans want to explore, we want to expand and grow. Aliens from other planets may have no reason to do that. They might be totally cool with being fully sentient but have no wish to map out their planet, or build. They could be as intelligent as us, or even more so, but just not have that drive to seek out other life like we do. Maybe they even know we're just here with their advanced technology and just don't care. I believe that human civilization may have gotten as advanced as we are now in the distant past. First, anatomically modern humans have been around for like 300,000 years. Civilization, from the earliest settlement we know of to today is maybe 20,000 years old. In short, there's absolutely plenty of time to go from Sumerians to Americans nearly 10 times over in the time span between the first modern humans and Sumerians. And given that there's nothing unusual about the humans who build Sumer. Second, there are lots of legends about human civilization being destroyed by angry gods, usually because of humans behaving badly. The Greeks had a story like that, the Bible, the Hopi, the Zarathustrians, just about any place where there's a record, you can find history of and often prophecies of a catastrophe that ends civilization and more often than not, caused by human hubris. Third, there are all kinds of anomalies in history. Egypt has model airplanes, Indian scripture has vimeenas that sound a lot like airplanes or spacecraft. There's the Pyrace map that shows Antarctica before it had been discovered, and it's accurate. These things don't make sense unless you have people understanding technology near our own level before us. All money created cannot be paid back because of interest. Therefore the monetary system is a pyramid scheme and trying to survive is like playing musical chairs. Oil and car companies used fear-mongering and assassins to stop electric or innovative cars from development in the 20th century. There was this guy who designed a car with an engine in the front and headlights which turned as the front wheels turned and he was assassinated. Others have designed cars powered by water or magnets were also killed. That there are missing pages is the history of mankind. I believe civilization is far older than Mesopotamia, 3500 BC but has been knocked back into the Stone Age in the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe 12,600 years ago, where a meteorite hit the giant ice cap from the last ice age which reached parts of the United States. This killed off most of the giant mammals like saber-toothed tigers, giant sloths, most of the mammoths. The past 10 years a lot of evidence has been uncovered to support this, like Gobliquita Pay in Turkey being from 10,000 BC and an impact crater in Greenland from 12,000 years ago with a diameter of 34 kilometers. We've also found unexplainable genetic links between humans from the Amazon and aboriginals from Australia, and only in the Amazon. This is important because this link is not found in North America and thus excluding migration of these genetic strains through the Beringer Strait. This could mean that our estimates of the first humans reaching the Americas, a little over 10.000 years ago, could be way off as ancient humans might have been able to cross the oceans. How else could people have reached places like Easter Island? where the closest mainland is 3.500 kilometers away. I do, however, not think this is a deliberate conspiracy but more a case or sticking with what we've accepted. Graham Hancock has some nice books and lectures, and Jimmy from the YouTube channel Bright Insight talks a lot about these theories. 
American prisons generate too much money for us to ever take the rehabilitation part of the process seriously. Therefore we will always have prisons. We have three in my town. The population of this town is about 40,000 and the prisons employ about 600 people. Add in the halfway houses and county jail you are looking at close to 1,000 people that have good paying government jobs. Not to mention all the police officers, judges, probation officers and criminal lawyers. If we took criminal justice reform seriously, a lot of people would be put off a job and our state funding would go way down. Some conspiracy theories, think flat earth or anti-vax, were deliberately created to ease the public into accepting internet censorship. For example, if YouTube censors out pro anti-vax videos, the public is happy to accept that kind of censorship because it's a matter of public health and safety, and negatively impacts children. But where do you draw the line? If we set a precedent that it's okay to censor one side of an argument, even if it's a ridiculous argument, there's really no limit to what gets censored in the future. It seems like the anti-vax movement has gained so much traction recently. It's on the news so frequently and talked about everywhere. Yet I've never actually encountered an anti-vaxxer in reality, nor do I know anyone that knows an anti-vaxxer. Seems like a made-up problem, or an exaggerated problem, so that the public can become outraged, demand that this group be silenced and welcome internet censorship. People are farmed. Not physically but economically. Capitalism works by adjusting prices to the point just below where it becomes too expensive. Products except in the most competitive areas are priced not at what they cost to produce but at what you, the idiot consumer, are willing to pay for it. Therefore we are all kept in a state of relative poorness. This ensures those at the top maintain control. Consider this as proof. If we stopped buying things for the sake of it, what would happen to pricing and what would happen to those mega corporations who are farming us? Skincare is a hoax to scam users of their money. It's designed to give skin temporary qualities that make it desirable, softness, smoothness, cleanliness, etc., but that's all it is. Temporary. Once the effect goes away, it leaves the skin in a slightly worsened state, and there begins a cycle of dependency. Either a dependency of the same brand or one similar, or one that claims to be better, at a more premium price. My evidence is that my girlfriend, and sister use such products. It's all lined up on the bathroom counter. Bottles and bottles of toners, cleansers, masks, scrubs. You name it. But despite using all these products their skin is still not what they'd like it to be. Me on the other hand, washes my face with water and dries it with a rough towel. It's like I'm trying to sand my face off with the towel. And then I just put some moisturizer on because my skin gets uncomfortably dry without it. I think I messed myself over there because now I have a dependency on the moisturizer. Anyway, my skin is still way better than theirs, and I use way less products. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more videos. Click the right box for the conspiracy playlist. Let us know in the comments what conspiracy theory you believe to be true.